What's up boys, in this video, I got boxes. All right, so in here we got a torque converter. We're gonna be adding to the CT200U. And then in here, I have stuff like engine risers and a smaller gas tank for the Predator engine so that it doesn't rub the top of the frame. I also have a smaller sprocket just in case we wanna try uh, some gear ratios. So yeah, thank you Amazon. In the next video, we're gonna be testing the difference between the normal driver that comes standard with all those torque converter kits and the performance one. To start this process, we're gonna go ahead and remove the motor. Alrighty, bolts are removed. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Yeah, there she goes. I will meet you on the table. Here she is. Let's go ahead and swap this gas tank. And look, if y'all haven't seen that kickstart video, that's pretty funny. This thing kicked back so hard it knocked this in and I had to all sorts of bendage to get that back. New gas tank is on and we are letting the old one drip into the new one. Got the gas tank on, put the sticker on, kind of looks a little tacky. Might take it off later. Might actually might be coming off actually. I don't know, might take it off. For now, let's go ahead and get this back on the bike. I take that back. First, we need to go ahead and mount this bottom plate or this riser to the mini bike. So let's go ahead and do that with those four bolts. And then we'll go ahead and set the motor on top and bolt the motor down. All right, now let's see if this motor fits. I hear a lot of people saying we have clearance issues, especially with the CT200U. So, so let's go ahead and see if she clears. Well, now that is closed. Look at that. If I didn't have this tank, it would definitely be rubbing on the top and I wouldn't be able to remove the gas cap. So this side or side mount or side fill tank is definitely helping here. So let's go ahead and get this hole, these holes lined up. Go ahead and put those bolts through the motor and I will get you back in a minute. Actually, side note, uh, the stock bolts that come with this riser are too short. So I had to go into my bolt drawer and find some like this. I actually need to go make a hard hardware store run so that I can find the right bolts so yeah for now these are just gonna have to do motors in all good to go i'm gonna leave those very bottom bolts that connected to the frame loose so that i can do some chain alignment later on when we get the chain on now let's go to the other side and get that torque converter in welcome to the other side where this should be a pretty straightforward installation so this problem guys why didn't y'all tell me i had the motor mount backwards anywho uh, here we go. Let's see if it clears now. Clears. Uh, I might have to cut off this little tab right here. Uh, we'll figure that out later, but let's go ahead and get these four bolts into the torque converter plate. And I'll see you then. Installed. All right, now let's get the boring uh, driver right here. And let's go ahead and install this guy. So first we're gonna go ahead and get these uh, washers, put them on the motor, including the small one. Um, then let's go ahead and get this back plate and not make so much noise. Throw this guy on. And now let's go ahead and check this measurement between here so that we have a straight. And actually I might need to add another washer on there. Cause if this isn't straight, then the um, belt will start to wear really fast. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra washer to this side. It needs it so that the belt lines straight and we don't have any belt wear problems. So I'll see you then. All right, never mind. I just had to tighten this nut and that pushed it back a little bit. So now we got this on. Let's go ahead and get this collar. Make sure this little piece is facing this way. Slide that guy on. Let's go ahead and get the belt with the arrow facing towards the engine. And like that. Now let's put this on first. There we go. Now let's put this piece on. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the cover, the little driver. There. The cover. Then this guy slides onto there. Like that. And I'm missing a washer. And the bolt. Yeah. So this goes there. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a lock washer and a washer for this bolt um, before I start running it. But for right now, it's on there. Let's go ahead and do the chain now. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and break the chain, this tired old chain that's ready to kick the bucket. But she's already stretched out. I'm gonna go ahead and order one of those, um, those like gold looking chains that are like pre-stretched and all that. This thing is ready to kick the bucket. Jeez. And yeah, there we go. This chain's like, I think two years old. The original chain that I got whenever I built the bike, straight chain video. That video went hard. Okay, here we go. And good. And that's why I have all this room over here so I can push the motor forward, tighten up that chain. Let's go ahead and get the master link. That guy on there. There she goes. And I gotta go find my clip because I don't know where that went. Get you back in a sec. There we go. Ready to go. All right, boys, the install is done and I just rode a wheelie all the way up my driveway. Now, takeoff on this thing is absolutely insane compared to a clutch. Also, this is the stock uh, 50 tooth rear sprocket on this TT200U. I might go 40 tooth because I, I do not need that much torque. It's just insane. Uh, just half throttle pops a wheelie. Stay tuned for part two of this video because we're gonna be comparing the clutch zero to 30 and top speed, the torque converter zero to 30 top speed, and also the performance driver zero to 30 and top speed. So stay tuned for that. Also installing that 40 tooth rear sprocket after we do all those tests, maybe to see if it, how much better it gets the top speed. But I'm also a little worried about the uh, 40 tooth not having enough torque in the top end. I don't know. We're gonna play around with it. I had that issue with my 100U, uh, my CT100U with a torque converter and a 212. I had to raise the teeth on the rear sprocket because it had a too small of a sprocket in the rear and didn't have enough torque on the top end and especially on the bottom end it was almost like a clutch so i don't want to go too low on the rear sprocket but that is a topic for the next video so i will see y'all then